let's just take a look inside the carburetor. Here we go, we can start to see these components appearing now. Now this is the fuel pump diaphragm cap and that extends between these two arrows here shown in blue. Here shown in green is the fuel pump diaphragm and shown in brown here is the fuel pump gasket. This is the fuel inlet pipe coming from the fuel tank. The fuel mixture adjustment screws, the high and low, they're here. Moving on to the metering area here and we've got the metering diaphragm there in green and the lid that covers the diaphragm. I haven't actually shown the gasket but there is one there. There's the metering valve and its seat there. We've got the metering lever and the metering spring. Here's the carburetor's main jet and this is the high jet for the mixture screw and the low jet for the mixture screws. These two holes just fix the carburetor to the machine, two bolts fastened through there. Now looking at these areas here, if we remove the gasket in these areas we'll see some important features. Built into the fuel pump diaphragm cap are a series of important indentations. Look, This one here, then further along this one, this one and then this one. Now what's important here is that these indentations are all compartmentalised and separated by the gasket shown in brown. And the only way these compartments are connected are through these fuel vanes shown in the blue arrows. These are also built into the cap. Now as part of the fuel pump diaphragm shown here in green, there are special extended areas that act as valve flaps, so one-way valves for the fuel. And one's here, here, and another one's here. And this is just showing the way they open and close. That part of the diaphragm in the middle moving there is the actual fuel pump area of the fuel pump diaphragm. And what powers the movement of that area of the fuel pump diaphragm there is this pipe here, the pulse line. And this is directly connected to the engine and it's sensitive to the up and down motion of the piston. I've just added a basic diagram of an engine here showing you the up and down motion of the piston. You can see that this piston is coming down and it's pushing air pressure from the back of the piston down through the pulse line and onto the back of the diaphragm. And that air pressure is forcing the diaphragm down there. And as it comes down, it forces pressure this way through this fuel vein. It then lifts this one-way valve flap off its seat. And the pressure continues this way through a fuel vein inside the carburetor body. And remember at the moment there's no actual fuel coming through the carburetor. It's just air pressure and the fuel will come in shortly. So the pressure continues and lifts this one-way valve flap directly off its seat. Then that pressure continues up to the bottom of the needle valve. Now originally when that fuel pump diaphragm came down it also forced pressure this way. But when it did so it forced that one-way valve flap fast on its seat so no pressure could go any further than this point which means there's no unwanted pressure going back up the fuel line back to the fuel tank. Now showing the piston going back up and we can see the difference now in the direction of air pressure. It's now drawing air back to the bottom of the piston. The piston's actually sucking air out to the back of it and drawing that metering diaphragm upwards and that's making a difference on the direction of pressure flow. So we've got pressure coming through these fuel veins into the center there where the fuel pump diaphragm is. The vacuum of the airflow this way has forced this valve flap onto its seat and because of that there's no suction pressure here in this fuel vein at all. So with no flow pressure affecting it this valve flap can sit naturally on its seat also. But the vacuum created by the metering diaphragm forces this valve flap off its seat and the vacuum can then be felt here in the fuel pipe. So really that vacuum's like a sucking in pressure in towards the carb, like when we use a straw and a cold drink. Of course as the piston goes up it also draws in air there in the centre of the carburettor through the venturi and that's obviously used for combustion. But it's not my intention to show you the combustion process and how this air goes in at this stage. I just wanted to show you the pulse line and how it's affected by the piston going up and down rather than showing this air going into the engine and used as combustion, which I haven't actually illustrated at all. Now the piston's still on its way up, but remember this all happens in the blink of an eye. But this here is the main jet. As the air rushes through the venturi there, drawn in by the upward motion of the piston, its speed rushing past the main jet here creates a vacuum. And that vacuum is felt here in the metering area. And you can see the direction of the vacuum by the blue arrows there. 
Now that air leaving the metering area beneath the metering diaphragm causes the vacuum and the vacuum pulls down on the metering diaphragm itself here shown in green. So as the diaphragm lowers, so does this dowel area here which is connected to the metering diaphragm. Now that dowel area there contacts the back of the metering lever here and that overcomes the pressure of the spring. It pushes the spring down which normally holds the back of the lever up. And because the lever is pivoted in the middle, it lifts the front end up. And when it lifts up, the needle valve lifts up with it, so it's no longer on its seat. So the piston's coming back down again, and it's blowing air pressure in through the pulse line to the top of the diaphragm, pushing the diaphragm downwards. And as it does so, we can see again there the direction of pressure, air pressure. We can see by the blue arrows which direction they're going in. And if we just note there, on the fuel pipe on the left hand side, we can see some fuel coming in, just starting to come in. And that fuel was sucked there, just like the straw in a cold drink, when the piston was going up. And that vacuum can be maintained and the fuel can be held in the line because the one-way valve flap closest to it is fast on its seat, caused by the downward motion of the fuel pump diaphragm, pushing air up hard at the bottom of it. So it can maintain that vacuum and not allow the fuel to run back to tank. And we can see the overall direction of air pressure with the blue arrows there. But please remember this all happens in a split second, the upward and downward motion of this piston. What I need to mention as well is, as the pressure goes up to the bottom of the needle valve there, that's ready pressure made by this stroke. And when the next stroke occurs, when the piston goes up, there's ready pressure there awaiting the needle valve to open and so can be used in the Venturi. Of course, I've just explained it at the moment using air pressure as an example. Let's just imagine this carburetor is new or it hasn't been used for a while, so it'll only be air in there before the fuel starts to come in. But I just wanted to show you the direction of airflow and how it relates to the up and down motion of the piston and how it does start to draw fuel through. So now I'll let the animation run and you can see just how the fuel comes through the carburetor and is used in the Venturi. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much for watching this video and I really hope you've enjoyed watching it as much as I've enjoyed making it. The information I've actually added is all based on my knowledge over the last 25 years plus as a repair engineer and I hope that knowledge has helped you also. I've certainly enjoyed passing that knowledge on. Thank you very much and I'll be back very soon.